With this release, you can protect worksheet data or workbook elements to prevent their modification. You can also specify a password that users must enter to edit protected worksheets, to change the structure of a workbook, and set the size and position of worksheet windows. In addition, you can extend permissions to users in order to edit ranges in a protected worksheet. In this video, I'll show you our workbook and worksheet protection along with other functionality to help secure your spreadsheet. Here we have a sample spreadsheet. First, let's look at workbook protection. Load a sample worksheet and freeze panes. Scroll the document to make sure the panes are frozen. Now right-click the Worksheet tab. The commands to insert, delete, rename, and hide a worksheet are visible and active. Let's hide unnecessary worksheets. Next, switch to the Review ribbon tab and click Protect Workbook. In the window, check Structure and Window Boxes. It prevents end users from changing a workbook structure by moving, deleting, adding, hiding, or displaying a hidden worksheet, or window position by freezing or unfreezing panes. Passwords are optional. We'll leave the password field blank. If we scroll the workbook, we'll see the panes are still frozen. I'll switch to the View tab, and you can see that the Freeze Panes command is disabled, so you cannot unfreeze panes. Right-click the Worksheet tab and you'll see the commands that change the workbook structure are also disabled. Now let's switch to the Review ribbon tab and click Unprotect Workbook. Since no password is set, the protection is removed immediately. Now right-click the Worksheet tab and check to see that workbook commands are available. I'll unhide hidden worksheets. And unfreeze panes. Now let's look at worksheet protection. Select a range that contains employee names. Right-click the worksheet to bring up the Format Cells dialog and switch to the Protection tab. All cells in a worksheet are locked by default. Uncheck the locked attribute for the selected range. Now switch to the Review tab and click Protect Sheet. By default, an end user can only select locked and unlocked cells. Locked cells are protected from editing. Leave the options checked by default and enter the password. Click OK and re-enter the password. I'll try to edit the cells in the hourly wage row and a window appears to inform me that the sheet is protected. However, I can edit the employee names because I had previously cleared it. To remove protection, click Unprotect Sheet and enter the password. Now the worksheet is not protected, so you can make edits anywhere. Now I'll show you how you can unlock worksheet ranges for authenticated users. I'll select the hourly wage row to be unlocked for authenticated users only. In the Review ribbon tab, click Allow Users to Edit Ranges. In the dialog, click New to specify a new range. The range refers to previously selected cells. Type in a password for this range and click OK. And confirm the password. Next, click Protect Sheet. Click OK in the Protect Sheet window to apply default protection. Now I'll try to edit a worksheet cell. It's locked, and we can see that with a warning about worksheet protection. If I try to edit an hourly wage, a window appears asking for a password. I'll enter the correct password, and now the entire hourly wage range becomes editable. The employee name cells are editable because they have the locked attribute cleared. The hourly wage cells are editable because we provided a password. Other worksheet cells are locked. In the Review ribbon tab, click Unprotect Sheet. I'll select the hourly wage range that will be unlocked for authenticated users only. In the Review ribbon tab, click Allow Users to Edit Ranges. In the dialog, click Permissions to specify group or user's accounts from Active Directory and check whether they are allowed to edit range without a password. 
specify that the documentation group is allowed to make changes to the specific worksheet range. And protect the worksheet. Let's try to edit the worksheet. The employee name cells are editable because they have the locked attribute cleared. The hourly wage range cells are editable because the application runs under the user account from the documentation group. Other worksheet cells are locked in a protected worksheet. Now let's look at how to use these protections in code. Here we use the workbook.protect method and specify a password. True protects the workbook structure and false does not. Right-click the Worksheet tab and make sure that the commands to insert, delete, rename, and hide a worksheet are disabled. To remove protection, use the workbook.unprotect method with the correct password. I'll right-click the Worksheet tab and make sure that commands to insert, delete, rename, and hide a worksheet are enabled. Now I'll use the worksheet.protect method and specify a password and default protection permissions, permissions to select locked and unlock cells. If I try to edit a worksheet, a warning appears about worksheet protection. To remove the protection, use the worksheet.unprotect method with the correct password. And I can now edit the worksheet cell. Now let's create a protected range with specific permissions. First, add the range to a worksheet collection of protected ranges. Create an edit range permission object, specify a current user for the username, a current domain for the domain name, and specify that the permission is not denied. Let's create a new security descriptor for the protected range using the edit range permission object we just created. I'll set the password to let me edit for the protected range and apply protection to the worksheet. If I try to edit a cell, a warning appears. I can, however, edit cells in the protected range. I'll change the username in the range permission to John. Now when I try to edit a cell in the protected range, a password prompt is displayed because the current user is not John. Type in the correct password and the cell becomes editable. And that's it. Thanks for watching and thank you for choosing DevExpress.